Today is the 30th of March 2020. My name is David Hickson and in today's video I'm not going to be taking a look at the financial markets as I usually do. I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be looking at the COVID-19 statistics. The statistics of how the coronavirus has been spreading around the world and I'm going to be discussing whether there are some cycles that can be found in those statistics. But perhaps more importantly, I'm going to be looking at the statistics with a trader's eye. I've been analyzing and trading financial markets for many, many years, and I've become very used to looking at charts and understanding the uh, meaning of the movements of the lines or the prices in those charts. And a lot of what has been shown to us by the media in terms of the charts which present the statistics of the COVID-19 virus has been a little misleading or perhaps not really very informative. Before we take a look at these statistics, I am obliged to show you these disclaimers, even though I'm not going to be speaking about the financial markets, but because I do sell financial analysis software, it's important that my videos show these disclaimers. So let's take a look at these statistics. This is a very useful site that you're probably familiar with. And the reason that I'm recording this video today is because over the weekend, of course, the tragic number of 10,000 deaths in Italy was passed. I am South African, but I live in Italy and we have been under lockdown in Italy for three weeks now and uh, that's a, an awful number, uh, 10,000. There was a lot of media coverage about it. And in looking at the media coverage, it struck me that a lot of the information presented was not presented in a very clear manner. And one of the big themes behind a lot of the media coverage was why has the lockdown not worked in Italy? And I was a little surprised because there is a way of looking at the numbers that demonstrates very clearly that the lockdown has worked in Italy. Of course, the number of 10,000 deaths is an absolutely tragic number, but I think it is important to look more carefully at the statistics to understand what is really going on. So let's speak a little bit about the way in which the media generally reports the statistics. And let's zoom in here on this chart at the bottom right. Let me see if I can bring this chart up. There we go. So this is the chart that is normally shown by any newspaper article or any of the media. They show this chart here, which is a devastating chart, of course, because this shows the spread of the virus and the way in which it has been exponentially increasing. In other words, uh, it's simply spreading faster and faster and faster. And uh, that, you know, big move upwards in the chart is fairly devastating and very worrying. But it's not really a very informative chart. And that's what I wanted to speak about today, because that chart creates a lot of hype and it's a very dramatic chart to put in your newspaper article, but it doesn't really provide us with very much information. What is much more important is to have a look at the daily increase. So now here is the daily increase, and this is the daily increase for uh, worldwide. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to uh, start focusing a little more on Italy, because when you're considering the whole world, there are uh, numerous factors that need to be considered, such as when different countries imposed lockdowns and uh, all that kind of thing. So uh, looking at the worldwide daily increase is, is, is not going to be very useful to us yet. Um, I'm hoping fairly soon it will be. But let me show you something really interesting that we receive. I live in the La Marche region of Italy, a very beautiful region, about the same level as Tuscany in terms of how far north we are, but on the east coast of Italy. And the La Marche region have been keeping us very informed 
every day, several times a day, we receive updates on the number of cases of coronavirus that have been found to be positive in our region, including the number of uh, recoveries and, of course, the number of deaths. So let's take a look at that. Here we go. It's a PDF file, and you can see this was updated on the 30th of March at 9 a.m., and here you can see the list of dates, the number of positive cases, uh, the cumulative number, and so forth. But what I wanted to show you were the charts. Now, there are two charts, and the first chart is this one here, which is the same as the chart that I showed you a moment ago. And when you look at that chart, it instills fear, of course, and it doesn't look very good. And you look at that and you say, well, yes, uh, the lockdown has not been working in my region of Italy, in the La Marche region. In fact, that's not true uh, because there is another chart over here at the top of the page. Now, this is the daily increase uh, in terms of the number of cases each day that were found to be positive. And now this is a much more encouraging chart. Uh, many people, perhaps, if they're not traders and they're not really very used to looking at charts, might wonder why it's encouraging, because the, these numbers are still pretty big. As you can see, there were 126 people that were found to be positive in our region of Italy yesterday, on Sunday, and 185 on Saturday. And, uh, you know, there was a, a really bad day over here on the 21st of March, 268 people. But in fact, it's a very encouraging chart, and I want to show you why. And I'm hoping that you can find data from your area or your city or your region so that you can perform a similar analysis and feel reassured about what is happening. So the lockdown for us was imposed, I think it was on the evening of the 8th of March. And looking at this chart, you might agree with the newspaper articles that were saying that, in fact, the lockdown hasn't worked. But uh, there are a few things to bear in mind here before we start taking a look at some of the detail. The first is that, of course, as you are probably well aware, the virus has an incubation period of between 7 and 14 days. And so you cannot expect from the moment that a lockdown is imposed that you're going to see a dramatic drop in the numbers because for the next 7 to 14 days, and let's uh, roughly try to mark that over here, 14 days is all the way to over there, uh, you would expect people who were infected before the lockdown was imposed to start presenting with the virus. And of course, there's an additional delay because somebody might start feeling the symptoms, but n but be hoping, of course, that, that, that what they have is a cold and it, it isn't the coronavirus. And so there would be a, a further delay before they present themselves to the people that are doing the testing for the testing. And then, of course, there's a bit of a delay while they wait for the results of the test. So, uh, you know, you could extend that by uh, several days. Some people suggest by, by as much as a week. So uh, that's the first thing to bear in mind. Obviously, from the moment of lockdown, you don't expect the numbers to change immediately. But uh, what else is encouraging about this? Well, this is where I would like to start taking a look at a trader's perspective, or in particular, a cycle analyst's perspective on these numbers and discuss why indeed they are encouraging. So I have created my own little spreadsheet using the numbers from our region. And here is that cumulative chart. It is not, as you can see, entirely exponential. Uh, you can see that there was a little bit of a, a, a flattening of the curve, which has become the very popular term. It's become a straight line rather than an exponential uh, curve, an, an accelerating curve. So already there's, there's uh, some fairly good news there, but that's still not a very informative chart. Here is a chart of the daily cases. Now, uh, the other chart that we were looking at a moment ago is what's called a histogram. And this is, of course, a line chart. A line chart is, is often easier to visualize in terms of the fact that you can come along with your pen and you can draw a curve over it. 
And you will notice that the curve that I've drawn, of course, reaches a high point and starts moving down. And so that is why this is encouraging. But all that I've done by drawing visually over that is I've performed an extraction of the data and it's a very useful extraction it's called a moving average difference and it is something that we use in cycle analysis as you're probably aware and so I am going to uh, break this down a little bit and show you exactly uh, how we can do it so let's have a look at this chart the blue histogram part of it is again the number of daily cases and you can see two lines there is a an, an orange colored line and a red colored line and those are moving averages so I'm sure you're aware that a moving average is used all the time in financial analysis on financial charts and it's simply an average over a number of days now I've plotted these moving averages in the way that Hearst suggested they should be, which is that they are displaced into the past so that the average occurs at the middle of the point which is being averaged, if you see what I mean. So the red curve is a three-day average and the uh, yellow curve on this chart is a five-day average. And so the good news on this chart is that the moving averages show what I did very roughly with my pen a moment ago. They show that in fact the three-day moving average has peaked and has been moving down. Okay, so that's a good thing because a moving average is often used to indicate trend. So the trend has turned from being clearly upwards to being clearly downwards and the same thing has happened with the yellow orange line which is the five day moving average so the five day moving average peaked over here on the 19th of March and since then it has been moving down what that means is that the trend in terms of the number of new cases is declining so the information on this chart is really useful. It's very encouraging. The number of new cases that are being found each day is declining. And so therefore the lockdown is working because the virus is spreading with less speed than it was before. Now let's take this one step further in terms of a Hearst Cycles analysis of these statistics. Hearst suggested that we could take a moving average such as the one I've just shown you and displace a line to the upside, that's this red line, and displace another line to the lower end and we would create what uh, Hearst called a channel. And what tends to happen is that something that is being moved by cycles will tend to come up to the top of the channel, then move down to the bottom of the channel, then to the top of the channel, then to the bottom of the channel, top of the channel, bottom of the channel, top of the channel, and so forth. Okay, and these channels don't come all the way up to the current day because, as mentioned, the moving average is displaced into the past by half the number of uh, bars or days over which the average is calculated. In this case, this is a five day moving average. So uh, there are two useful pieces of information here. The one is the general direction of the channel, which is the good news that we looked at a moment ago. The fact that the channel is now clearly moving downwards indicates that the trend is downward. And we can detect the presence of shorter cycles within that channel by the way in which price exceeds the upper channel line and then the lower channel line and bounces uh, between them. Okay, and that is what we would expect to uh, keep happening as time passes. Now there's a, an interesting uh, little point to make here. There is a fairly obvious cycle. I don't know whether you have noticed it yet, but these low points are very clear on this chart and there is a, a clear cycle that is developing there. So some people think that cycles must be very abstract concepts but in fact 
uh, the reason why those are low points is, in my opinion, a, a very simple and a very obvious one. The dates there are the 15th of March, the 22nd of March, and yesterday, the 29th of March. The fact that we had a lower point in the middle of last week is simply more good news because uh, you can see the trend is, is moving down again. But if we focus on the three low points that I've highlighted there, those are all, of course, Sundays. So why would there be a low point on a Sunday? The answer is uh, very prosaic. It's simply that people would rather not pick up the phone and call a medic or take themselves into hospital on a Sunday. If they are concerned about their symptoms, the chances are they will in fact report it on a Saturday, which is why the Saturdays tend to have fairly fairly high levels and the Sundays have lower levels. And the Mondays generally always see a bit of a bounce up because of course you will get some people who will take themselves into hospital or call a medic on the Saturday to avoid having to do it on the Sunday. Uh, and then you'll get some people who will wait through the Sunday and then realize on the Monday that they really need to do this and so so they will uh, do it on the Monday, which is why you will tend to get that weekly cycle. You'll get the low points every Sunday and you'll get the higher points on the Saturdays and you'll always get a bounce up pretty much on the Monday. And so I wouldn't be surprised to see another bounce up today because today is Monday. So that's... Uh, a fairly prosaic argument for why we might find a cycle present in this data. But in some ways, that is really what cycles are. They are simply a reflection of the way in which people behave. And of course, we, even under lockdown, follow our w weekly routines. And so people are generally reluctant to take themselves into hospital on a Sunday. So I hope you found that interesting and encouraging. There has been so much uh, negative news about the coronavirus. Inevitably, I think it's important to focus where we can on the positive and encouraging aspects of the way in which we are fighting the spread of the virus. And uh, I hope you found it an interesting way of applying a trader and analyst's approach to finding cycles in data. I hope that wherever you are, you are staying healthy and looking after yourselves and doing your best to stay positive in the face of the spread of the virus. If you are able to get statistics for your local area, then I would encourage you to start analyzing them in the way that I've demonstrated here. It's a very simple analysis process, but it should hopefully uncover some positive and reassuring news.